Here we go, recording the screen. I just found out you can do this on the Mac, my old Mac. So awesome, uh, thanks to Windy, we've got satellite imagery across the globe. You can see it's a visible image. You've got the sun moving across. You can see some sun glint there where the sun's hitting the surface uh, straight on. And it's also over here, which makes me think that this segment has um, got different timing to this segment. And uh, in the middle, we can see lots of activity with tropical storms and it's cyclone, uh, sorry, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's called a typhoon, typhoon and that's Kamuri. And uh, either side of the intertropical convergence zone, we've got all the storm activity, so ge general up motion of the air. We've got down motion of the air and much drier in the um, subtropical arid belts, which is the reason Australia is so dry. And uh, yeah, linking up with this typhoon, we can see all this air here is speckled with cumulus cloud. It's, it's because it's cold air moving towards the uh, tropics. So cold air over a warm surface gives instability and uh, cumulus cloud. And ahead of that, what happens is the warm air from the tropics gets drawn down and gradually rises up to form this high cloud. It's high because if we look at the infrared, we can see it's whiter. Whiter means it's cold, which means it's higher up. And if there's this other layer, the enhanced infrared, which shows the actual temperatures as colours. So this is really red here because it's really cold at the top of that tropical cyclone. And where there's you know intense storm activity, um, all, all these you can pick out the storms pretty easily because the tops are really high. Um, and same in the southern hemisphere, we've got some, uh, you know, some high high cloud associated with these these fronts. Uh, but in between, um, we've got this this cold air. It's not so high, and we've got this warm air being drawn down from the tropics ahead of the front. It's uh, really low uh, cloud, like basically, you can sometimes get that overcast crowd that you often get in Christchurch. But above it, there's all this dry. Um, dry air and blue skies so if you go into the mountains it's often a good day when Christchurch can be covered in that low cloud so I'll just go to the zoomed in version uh, probably just to go back to normal infrared so we've just had this uh, trough pass through Brisbane bring us a few storms actually if you put the infrared back on and if they're still active over water you can see the nice high tops associated with those storms down here you can see some more speckled cloud, like some more air, cold air pushing up. And um, Australia is in uh, drought at the moment. We've had a uh, record late retreat of the Indian monsoon up that part of the world. So it's taking a lot longer for all that tropical moisture, um, this stuff here, the monsoon, to get to northern Australia. We've got some storms, but the, the real thick, deep moisture is um, still a long way off. It's going to be pretty late this year. And part of the reason is because we've got a cold Indian Ocean on our side. And um, yeah, that's why it's been, it's warmer on the Indian side and it's taken a long time for it to come down. Um, that's the main driver for the drought at the moment, although we do expect to see more of it with climate change as these um, middle arid areas between the, the fronts and the tropical weather, the subtropical um, ridge, as that gets bigger and higher, stick around for longer and um, it's just basically more persistent because there's more energy in the uh, subtropics, more energy in all these storms because there's more water because the air's warmer, it can support more water. So you get a stronger um, hot, dry air pushing down alongside it. And all these things are what drives our weather, all this hot air that, you know, the cold polar air and the warm um, tropical air and, and the boundaries between them, like that's basically where most of our weather comes from is the, the fronts between at least for the southern part of Australia that's where all your, your weather comes from is your fronts normally that's more a winter thing because in summer as the sun moves down all the weather moves down too so we get more of this tropical weather in the north part of Australia in the wet season in the summer wet season and normally you get this dry um, this kind of weather coming down to the southern part of Australia and New Zealand so at the moment, New Zealand is getting more like a winter pattern, just getting battered by fronts just every day for the next week. I was going to go there, but I pulled the pin on that one. Um, and uh, that's because the way we measured that, there's an indice for it called a southern annular mode, and that means at the moment it's, um, I think it's negative, I always get I forget what sign it is, but basically 
it's meaning that all the fronts and stuff are way too far north for what they should be this time of year. It all should be pushing down and this stuff should be coming down to the northern part of Australia. But this is all in drought and it's going to be a bit more of a wait. Um, nothing substantial in the next month for the northern part of Australia. So you can see there's some low here linking up with this cold front and all this warm air is being brought, drawn down. Um, if I go back to the closer image, you can see um, this cold air is doing the same thing behind it as well with this uh, broad scale lifting of air as it comes down from the tropics. The reason for that is you're kind of bringing warm air um, over cooler air as you go towards the poles and that makes it so, sort of lift up and as it lifts up it form, eventually gets to a point like here where it starts forming cloud. Uh, that's just the same as if you get some air um, at the surface and you shine some sun at it and you get a thermal and it goes up and eventually it it, um, as it expands, as the air pressure gets less as it rises, it will reach a point where clouds form. So you get a cumulus cloud form at the top of the thermal. Same thing's happening here, but on a broad uh, scale, over thousands of kilometres as the air goes along down here and eventually lifts up to form cloud. And often you get storms embedded in this uh, flow as um, when it's being lifted, it's destabilising it as well. So um, that's kind of been what's happening here. It interacts with the surface as well when you get daytime heating, but sometimes you get storms in the middle of the night and that's always to do with these, um, it's often to do with these broad scale lifting of air and it just eventually it gets to a point where pop, you get a storm. So uh, Enzo, the El Nino slash La Nina index is relatively neutral at this time of the year. So that doesn't have much to do with the drought, but when this um, moisture is being drawn from the Indian Ocean, there's not as much moisture in it because the ocean's a bit cooler. And well, it's, a, it's I guess it's a lot cooler. Um, so this place is just super dry, like you're getting cloud bases of over 5,000 meters at times. Um, on the really hot days I've noticed in the last few months, it's pretty incredible. Right, that's probably enough. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Maybe a little bit more structured next time.